Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another video. I hope you're all well and I hope you've had a really lovely summer. It feels a while since I've done that little um, introduction speech because I haven't done a video for about six weeks. So even though I was putting out videos over the summer holidays, they were all pre-recorded videos. So I feel as though I haven't recorded a video for ages and I felt quite nervous before starting this video today. Um, but it is going to be a makes video and they're always my favourite to record. So um, yeah, I am quite excited as well. So I hope you're all really well and you had a lovely summer. If you did watch my videos over the summer, my little My Top 5 series, thank you so much. I know they were a little bit different and maybe weren't relevant or um, to everyone's taste, um, but I just thought it was a good way to maybe answer some questions that I'd had about things um, and just to kind of keep my videos going over the summer. Yeah, so if you did watch, thank you very much. And if you haven't watched and you'd like to, I'll link the playlist down below. So if you are new to my channel, my channel is all about sewing. I post lots of sewing content. I post what I've been making, fabric hauls, sewing plans, sew alongs and things like that. So if you are new or if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love you to consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, please don't forget to click the notification bell because that will notify you every time I put a new video up. And I always really love chatting to everyone in the comments below as well. So please do leave me a like and a comment if you have enjoyed the video or if you have any questions about anything I talk about today. So with all of that said, let's get on to talking about everything I made during July and August. So this is a bit of a bumper makes video. I did make quite a lot. I've got a few things to share with you because obviously it is a two month kind of video. I didn't make that much over the summer and some of the things I did make are kind of quick things, t-shirts and things. So um, yeah, I'll try not to waffle on too much but I'm really looking forward to sharing with you what I've been making today. It is so hot here today. The children went back to school on Monday and um, typically the weather turned into a massive heat wave. It's been so cold here in the UK over the summer holidays while the children have been off. We've literally been in jumpers and coats and things while we've been going out and about. And the minute they went back to school on Monday, we had this huge heat wave. It's like 28 degrees here today or something. It's just crazy. I wish we could have had that weather while they were off. It would have been so much nicer. But anyway, that always seems to be the way in the UK these days. August is just a washout. It's really cold. And then as soon as the children go back, it gets really lovely and hot. So I apologise if I look really hot and sweaty while I get into this video. I'm already feeling a bit as if I'm melting, but I really needed to get this video done today. So I thought I'd just kind of get on with it and hope I don't look too red and hot and sweaty while I'm talking. <laughs> So the first make I have to share with you, and I'll just quickly mention this one because I do have a whole other sew along video on this make, and this is my Ogden Cami Peplum top pack. So this is uh, one of my Minerva brand ambassador makes. So this lovely art gallery rayon fabric was gifted to me in exchange for a blog post, blah, 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 you know the drill. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is one of my Minerva brand ambassador posts, but I did actually film it as a sew along. And um, I followed a hack, which was from the True Bias website, um, which talked you through how to adapt the Ogden Cami pattern and make it into a button up peplum style cropped um, cami. And I absolutely love how this turned out. It's really, really pretty. It's lovely and floaty and cool for the summer. And I'm really sad that I didn't get to wear this very much over the summer, because as I said, the weather wasn't the best. Um, but I think I'll probably get some wear out of it in the autumn with a cardigan or something, or um, you know, underneath little cardies and things. So hopefully I'll still be able to wear it into the autumn. But yeah, I'm so pleased with this. I really love how it's turned out. I do keep meaning to, um, redo these buttons because I think they're slightly wonky. <laughs> it's just one of those things where I can't work out if I'm actually that bothered enough by it that I need to re-sew the buttons on or not. I just realised actually that I haven't actually got any pictures of me wearing this top. Um, as I say, I did do a video on it, so I am wearing the top in the video. So if you'd like to see it on, I'll link that video down below. Um, or I'll try and quickly take a snap uh, before I put this video up. But yeah, I've just realised I've not actually got any pictures of me wearing it. Um, but yeah. Nothing more to say on that one really, other than I love it and if you'd like more details on that make, I'll link that video down below and I have put a few more pictures up on my Minerva profile over on the Minerva website, so I'll also link that down below as well if you'd like to go and see more details about this make. 
So the next thing I made back in July was a really lovely midi dress. Um, I say it's really lovely, in my opinion anyway. <laughs> I've wanted to make a midi dress, like the perfect midi dress for a long while now. I've always admired midi dressing on other people and I love the whole midi maxi um, dress trend, but being petite as I am at five foot three, I always find it a really hard length to master, if you know what I mean. Um, it's really hard to kind of, get the right length and I've tried it before when I've made dresses and um, for some reason I just haven't quite got the right length. So recently you'll know that I made the Lyra dress by Tilly and the Buttons which is a pattern that is a midi dress but on me it turned out to be maxi dress or probably a little bit longer even. So I ended up having to kind of resize the frill of that dress on the bottom just to take it up to the midi length that I wanted. Um, and one day I was actually walking to school thinking about midi dresses and how I'd like to make one and thinking how I could do it and it dawned on me that I had actually made my perfect midi length dress already in my Lyra dress. So um, I thought to myself well how can I make a midi dress and thought about the patterns I already had and realised that um, the indigo dress by Tilly and the Buttons, I'll pop a picture in here, but I'm sure you've probably already seen the indigo dress, it's very popular. I love the bodice of that dress, um, and I've made a couple of indigo dresses and I really like how it fits and everything. Um, and then I realised that in the Lyra dress pattern, you get a really good pattern, obviously, for a couple of skirt tiers that are really nicely gathered. So um, I decided to try out an indigo Lyra hack. Um, and here's how it turned out. So this is my first version. So this is in a really lovely chambray fabric, which was kindly gifted to me by Abacum Fabrics quite a while ago now. It's a really lovely soft chambray. It's not kind of crisp at all. It's really nice to wear. Um, and down the selvage of the fabric is this really pretty embroidery detail. So you'll know if you've followed me for a while that I actually made a Darling Ranges dress with um, a similar embroidered selvage on and I use that for the hem as well. So I've just done a similar thing here with this dress and I've used the embroidered selvage of the fabric just as the bottom tier of the skirt. It's going to be really difficult for me to show you this obviously while I'm talking so I will put in pictures of the finished dress while I'm talking so you can see how it turned out. Uh, but basically for the bottom tier of the dress I've just used the um, fabric and I've turned it the other way so that the selvage and the embroidery makes up um, kind of the bottom tier and then I've hemmed it, if that makes sense. <laughs> so uh, basically I, um, I took the bodice of the indigo dress, I shortened it slightly by about an inch. Uh, the indigo pattern is slightly dipped at the back of the bodice, so I straightened that off just so that I didn't have that dip at the back because I just wanted it to be level. And I actually really like that change and when I make my next indigo I think I'm going to keep it straight like that because I feel like it's more flattering on me. Um, so I'll definitely keep that change. And then I've played around with the tear length. So this part of the skirt of the dress is actually the skirt pattern from the Lyra dress. And I've just shortened that to make the second tear quite short. And then I've used the frill pattern from the Lyra dress and I've lengthened it to make a longer tier for the bottom of the skirt. So I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. Um, I obviously, before I made the tiers and before I played around with the tier measurements and everything, I measured myself and where I wanted the dress to fall based on my Lyra dress because I really liked how that fell on me um, and I really liked the length of that. So I went on those measurements and just kind of played around with the tiers of the Lyra dress pattern just so that the overall length fell at the same length of my Lyra dress. I hope I'm explaining this correctly for the video but um, I have actually written up a blog post which includes all the measurements and things I used for my um, adapted tiers. So if you are interested to know a little bit more about how I adapted the pattern and the measurements I used and everything then I'll link that down below so you can pop over and read it if you like to. But anyway yeah I'm absolutely thrilled really with how this turned out and I just felt after I'd made this I had my perfect kind of tiered midi dress um, pattern pieces that I could then kind of use to attach to another bodice that I really like. So yeah that's how that one turned out. It's a really quite um, simple change I guess to make and once you've done it once then as I say you can use the pattern pieces again for other dresses and things. With this one obviously because of the embroidered hem I did have to be a little bit careful with matching up the embroidery at the bottom and everything. I just had to make sure that I had enough hem left underneath the selvage that I could turn it out without turning 
up the embroidery and interfering with that lovely pattern. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Um, lovely chambray midi dress. This fabric is from Abercrom Fabrics, as I say. I have asked them um, if they still have it in stock because I couldn't find it on their website and they said they did and they were going to let me know. So if I can find this fabric to link, then I'll link it down below if you'd like to pop over and have a look at it. So I loved my chambray midi dress so much that so I immediately made a different version and this time I made it from a really lovely green ditzy floral fabric from Stuff and Still and I absolutely love this one too. Um, it was exactly the same, I did exactly the same things and made it up in exactly the same way as my chambray one. Um, but because this is obviously a viscose, it really, it hangs a bit differently from the chambray one. It hasn't got so much structure and it just feels really comfy and cool to wear on a hot day. Um, I wore this over the summer holidays when we did have a bit of sunshine and it was just so nice to wear. So yeah, I'll pop a picture of this one in as well just so that you can see how the two different dresses look. And I think it's really interesting. I'm always quite interested to see how different patterns turn out in different fabrics and um, I think in the chambray one you can really see the kind of definition in the tears but with this one obviously because it's quite drapey and the fabric is really busy you can't really notice the tears so much um, which is fine I really like it and I just feel so kind of floaty and swishy and cool in it and um, yeah I really love this one too. It's really funny actually because I feel like this summer my style has really changed um, so in the past, in the summer months, I've really kind of enjoyed wearing my knee length dresses or my shorter dresses, but this year I really didn't want to wear shorter dresses, I don't know why. Um, well, one of the reasons is actually that I suffer from something called polymorphic light eruption, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> um, I'll put it on the screen anyway, I'll check the name of it and I'll put it on the screen. So that if anyone else um, suffers as well, maybe we can sympathise together. But basically, um, it's something that's happened to me ever since I was a child, and it doesn't always happen in the sun, but sometimes um, I'm, I think I, it means that I'm allergic to the sun, basically. So if I'm not careful with my skin in the sun, I can really come out in this really awful kind of bright purple rash. And it's really quite strange because it only really affects my shins. Um, but obviously, if I do get it, um, and it did happen this summer, actually, um, I feel quite kind of uh, like I don't want to be showing my legs off so much and obviously also I want to keep them covered up from the sun as well so I really realised then that I didn't have many long or midi length clothing in my wardrobe so I really wanted to make up a few of these kind of dresses just so that I could wear them in the sun and protect my legs and um, yeah, and didn't really want to show my legs either. It's really annoying actually, because I love summer and I love being in the sun and I love being outside. It's just something that seems to flare up now and again. And as I say, I've had it since childhood um, and it looks really awful when you see it. It almost looks like a, it sounds horrible to say, but it looks like a kind of meningitis rash. It doesn't disappear under a glass or anything. Um, so yeah, I don't want to really alarm anyone <laughs> with the rash either if they see it on me. Um, so yeah, a bit sensitive about that. So it was really good this year to make up some things that I can wear to kind of cover up in the sunshine this year. If anyone else suffers with that as well, please do let me know how you cope in the summer and let me know any products or anything that you use. I've um, only recently realised uh, that that's what it's called. I just thought it was something that happened to me, but this year it was annoying me so much that I actually probably tried to kind of look into it and see if I could find out what causes it because no one seems to know really. I've not really had a proper answer from doctor or anything. Um, they just know it's nothing serious, but yeah, I think I've researched it to be that, um, this polymorphic light eruption thing. So if you are a sufferer as well, then please do um, let me know how you deal with it in the summertime. Sorry, I'm waffling on now again. I'll get back to my makes. So the next make I have to share is actually what I'm wearing. And this is my favorite midi dress. So after my um, kind of success with the Indigo Lyra hacks, um, I thought that I would give a Myosotis Lyra dress hack a go. And I had this fabric from Stuff and Still, and it's one of those things, I think this happens to a lot of us as sewists, but sometimes you get a fabric and you can just immediately see where you want it to be. And um, that's what happened with this beautiful fabric from Stuff and Still. I absolutely love this fabric. Um, the florals in it kind of give me 70s vibes. I think it's so pretty and I love blue and I love the colours in this. So yeah, I really wanted this to be something special um, and in my head I could just see it as a, like a Myosotis Lyra 
hack. <laughs> so I had that idea in my head for a while and um, during the summer holidays I was actually going out for a lovely afternoon tea with one of my best friends. Um, it was supposed to happen a couple of years ago for a special birthday and because of lockdown and Covid and everything we couldn't get it booked. So two years later we finally managed to get this lovely afternoon tea booked and I really wanted to wear something special for it and I wanted to wear this my associate's dress that I hadn't even made so I started it about two days before we were going to go to the afternoon tea and I made it really quickly um, and literally finished the skirt the morning of the afternoon tea. I never normally make things quickly like that. I'm quite, um, an, you know, like a slow sewer, I suppose. Um, but it's just kind of showing me that I can get things done quickly if I need to. And I was really unfussy about making it as well. I just made it really quickly. And it's funny because it's turned out to be one of my favorite makes really. And it's one of the things that I feel as though I've done quite a good job on really. And because I was quite speedy with it, it's quite funny that it's turned out like that. It's weird how things go like that, isn't it? And sometimes you can spend ages on something and everything goes wrong and you can do it really carefully. So yeah, one of those things. Anyway, <laughs> so basically I just use the Myosotis dress pattern, the bodice of that as it is. And again, I've just attached it to uh, my adapted Lyra skirt pattern. So I'll just stand up and show you the bodice. I'll put in a picture as well of me wearing it, obviously, so you can see how it looks. Um, yeah, so this is where the bodice falls. This is just exactly as the pattern is. I've not adapted this in any way. There's two darts here and two bust darts. Um, and then you can see that I've just attached my top tier to the bodice and then the bottom tier onto the uh, top skirt. And I absolutely love this dress. I really, really like it. I think this is my style, if you know what I mean. I love my Lyra dress because it's a shirt dress. I really like a shirt dress. <laughs> um, but my Lyra shirt dress, because of the collar, just feels that like bit more formal, I think. So I don't necessarily want to wear it on a normal day, if you know what I mean. Um, so today is just a normal day. I'm doing the school run, doing a bit of work and doing this video and things. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily wear my Lyra dress um, on one of those days. But um, I have worn it quite a lot, but I've worn it when we've been going out or going for dinner or something because it just feels a bit more kind of smart to me. Um, and I think with the Myers Otis dress, this is just, I feel comfortable in this. I really like this neckline. It doesn't feel uncomfortable to me. There's nothing annoying me about it. I really like the style of it. Um, so yeah, I think this is just kind of my style really. I think I've found my perfect body. Um, so yeah, I was rushing to get this dress finished before we went to afternoon tea and I didn't have any buttons that perfectly matched this fabric. So I decided to give covered buttons a go. I'll also just stand up again and show you. Um, so these, I'm really pleased with how these turned out and I think they suit the dress really nicely. But self-covered buttons are a bit of a pain to do, aren't they? I was kind of trying to do them quickly and do them really fiddly because they're a really fiddly thing to do. Uh, but I got them done eventually and actually I don't really need to open all the buttons when I put this on, I just need to open the top one really. Uh, so I could have probably got away with just um, sewing on buttons and not worrying too much about buttonholes but anyway I've done it all properly this time and yeah I'm really really pleased with how that turned out. So I think the next version of this dress that I need to do is just to try this skirt on my beloved Darling Ranges pattern and then I'll be satisfied. <laughs> Because uh, yeah, it really is a good hack to do and as I say, I think I just feel like my style has changed a bit now and I really want to wear kind of midi length longer dresses, um, particularly in the summer months. So yeah, we'll see if I get a Darling Ranges Lyra hack done in the future. So another make uh, which I made back in July now, it feels like ages ago that I made this actually but I haven't shared it yet. Um, I made a Megan Nielsen Jara sweatshirt from the other colourway that I had of the Atelier Brunette sweatshirt in fabric. So yeah, a really quick simple make. I just made the kind of standard sweatshirt pattern which is quite cropped and quite boxy. Uh, but I really like that style at the moment. It's really cosy um, and I yeah, just feel really kind of relaxed um, in it. I really like the relaxed kind of oversized cropped fit um, and I'd made a previous version of the Jara in the navy version of this fabric and I loved it and I did think about making a linden just for something different but then I thought well I'm so happy with my previous Jara why don't I just make another version of that because I'll know that I'll be happy with it. So you might remember that I'd had some trouble trying to find ribbing for this fabric. The actual Atelier Brunette ribbing was sadly out of stock so I couldn't get that and I did order a couple of um, other kind of off-white ribbings and they weren't quite the right colour and I thought um, 
this is going to be silly if I keep ordering different ribbons and they don't match I'm just going to have a load of ribbon that I'm not going to use <laughs> so eventually I decided to give in and on this version I just used the fabric to do the cuffs and the neckband and everything so I probably would have preferred a uh, ribbon but actually it's a better use of the fabric because I made this in just a meter of this fabric and that included all of the cuffs and everything and with my navy version obviously I used a separate ribbon I have quite a lot of that fabric over and you know that um, Atelier Brunette fabrics they're not the cheapest are they so I wanted to get kind of my money's worth out of it um, so yeah it's a better use um, and a better way of kind of getting your money's worth out of the fabric to use the fabric for the the um, ribbing and the neckbands and everything because I had less wastage. Um, I just sometimes think that ribbing looks nicer for sweatshirts. But anyway, I'm really happy with this. Uh, just a lovely, simple kind of sweatshirt. This fabric is not very thick, uh, but it is quite cozy. So I think it'll be a really good one for kind of transition from summer into autumn. Um, and it was really good actually over the summer holidays when the weather was quite chilly. I wore my navy one quite a lot and I wore this one as well because it was just kind of the perfect weight really where it wasn't too hot and it wasn't too cold so yeah really happy with that one um love the Jara sweatshirt I really um want to make more of these for autumn and winter by the way I'm not sure if it's Jara or Yara so I apologize if I'm saying it wrong perhaps you can let me know in the comments if I'm saying it incorrectly so next I made a couple of t-shirts so I've recently well I've been wanting for quite a while to kind of just start making a few more basics uh, for my wardrobe because as you know <laughs> I make a lot of dresses and things but they're not always what I reach for and what I want to wear on a daily basis so um, it's taken me a long while to get into making t-shirts because I did struggle with getting my head around neckbands for a while they made me really nervous and to be honest they do still bring me out in a bit of a sweat now <laughs> uh, but I'm a bit more used to them so I do like to try and make some other t-shirts that um, I want to wear quite a lot so I made um, an Agnes t-shirt in this peacock cotton jersey this is an art gallery cotton jersey I've shown it in a previous fabric haul video before I think um, it's an absolutely lovely quality jersey it was really nice to work with um, and it's really soft and easy to wear the only thing I'd say about this is um, the black did run a little bit in the wash so I think I've I, I pre-washed it and then I think I've washed it once since after I've worn it and um, it has got that kind of black it has got that kind of faded black to it if you know what I mean you can tell that it's been washed personally I don't really mind that because I quite like that look but if um, it's something that would bother you then just kind of keep that in mind um, but yeah really really happy with this I make size two in an Agnes top it is quite fitted so I actually don't really take a seam allowance when I make the um, Agnes top because I think I was a bit silly really and I cut straight into the pattern whereas I should have maybe cut a size three and taken the proper seam allowance and I think it would have fitted better but I cut straight into my Agnes pattern at a size two because I thought that's what I was and um, yeah it is a little bit on the fitted side but I think an Agnes top is supposed to be fitted anyway so I don't really mind um, but I might one day have to reprint the PDF and just do a size three instead. Uh, but yeah, at the moment it's fine. I really, really like this top. It's super quick to make. I think I knocked this out in about an hour, including cutting time as well. So yeah, a really quick one. I should have got on with this sooner, actually. This fabric was sitting in my stash for ages before I got on to it. But I think I've mentioned before that I just don't always want to make t-shirts. They feel a bit of a necessity rather than um, something I enjoy that much. Uh, so yeah, this was kind of put off for a while. So I'm glad it's made now. And the next t-shirt I made was a Tabitha t-shirt from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. So this um, is another art gallery jersey, but this one was actually gifted from Minerva, one of my brand ambassador posts. So I have written this up actually now and it's on my Minerva profile, I think should be up by the time this video goes out anyway. But yeah, another really lovely quality jersey. I love art gallery fabrics, all of them. But I think with jerseys particularly, the quality is really nice. It feels really soft. Sometimes I feel like cotton jerseys can feel a little bit kind of stiff almost, um, but this one's really nice and soft. So yeah, um, really simple pattern. You do need to trace out your Tabitha pattern from the pages at the back of the Make It Simple book. So for this one, I went for a size three because I didn't want it to be too fitted. Um, and that's perfect. And I'm really pleased with that size. It fits really nicely. Um, so yeah, really pleased with this. I went for the white and black jersey just because I thought it would go really nicely with some other separates and things that I have in my wardrobe. And hopefully I'll get a lot of wear out of that. 
I would say though that I don't think I've yet found my perfect t-shirt pattern or my perfect jersey to use with t-shirt patterns at the moment. I still have quite a lot of ready to wear t-shirts that just feel that little bit more comfortable than my handmade t-shirts. I don't know if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, you may do, but I think with some ready to wear t-shirts, I'm not sure what knit fabric they use, but it's kind of a not very stretchy knit um, and it kind of just hangs and drapes and feels really soft. I can't quite, I haven't been able to find that kind of jersey in the shops yet. Um, so I am on the hunt to find my perfect kind of jersey. Maybe it's a tencel or something, probably something quite expensive. <laughs> um, but you know that kind of hangy drapey jersey that doesn't have too much stretch in it. I need to find something like that because sometimes I still reach a bit more for my ready to wear t-shirts than I do my handmade t-shirts just because they feel a little bit more uncomfortable under things, I think. I don't know if you know what I'm waffling on about. Um, <laughs> That's just how I feel in things. I'm very fussy about things, I think. The more I talk about my clothes and things, the more I realise how fussy I am about things. But yeah, that's how I feel about making t-shirts. So if you know of a really comfy jersey, or maybe you've used one in the past, then let me know in the comments below so that I can maybe go and hunt for that jersey and make my perfect t-shirt. So after I made my Tabitha t-shirt, I really wanted to make a Tabitha dress. So this has been on my list of things I wanted to try for quite a while now. And I got this cotton jersey from Minerva. I did buy this one myself. Um, and I actually thought that it was a little bit different. I thought it was a bit of a different kind of jersey to what it actually was. I thought it was more of a French terry type jersey rather than a cotton jersey. That was my mistake. I just hadn't read the um, information properly. So when it arrived, I couldn't make with it what I wanted to originally make with it. So I thought I'd try a Tabitha dress with this uh, lovely stripy cotton jersey. Um, so basically with the Tabitha dress, you use your Tabitha t-shirt pattern, but you just cut it along um, a line that's marked on the pattern to make it that bit shorter. Um, and then you have to draft a skirt based on your measurements and it tells you how to do that in the book. Luckily, I'd already drafted my skirt pattern because I'd used it for something else in the past, um, but I'd never actually made this dress. I'd just used the skirt for something else. Um, so it was really nice to have a go at this. So you basically use part of the skirt and part of the t-shirt to make the, the drawstring channel. And then here where the uh, drawstrings kind of come out, you can either make jersey buttonholes or you can put in um, what they called eyelet things so that they look a bit more professional, but I don't have one of those tools, so I didn't do that this time. I'm thinking of getting one actually so that I can do that in the future if I make anything else like this. But yeah, that's my Tabitha dress. Um, not sure what I feel about this dress. I think I've made a bit of a mess with the neckband on this one. I think I was so worried about making my neckband too loose that I've actually made it too tight. And um, I'll pop in an image now. I haven't got many photos of this dress because I just didn't feel that happy with it. So I didn't take many photos. But I did take a quick snap for Instagram just so that I could ask people if they knew what the problem was with this dress. Uh, basically, when I have it on, it kind of pulls around here and you can, it feels a bit uncomfortable anyway, but you can actually see it kind of pulling in from the sides, if you know what I mean. It just didn't look or feel as if it hung right. Um, and when I asked on Instagram, lots of people kind of confirmed what I thought and that was that I'd probably put the neckband in too tight. And I think I can tell that actually when I look at the back here, you might be able to see that it's kind of crinkling up. So yeah, I think basically I've just made a bit of a hash of the neckband. So what I'm planning to do to salvage this dress is actually cut the neckband off. Um, and I'm gonna lower this neckline slightly because it's quite high anyway, and you know how I feel about high necks, they bother me a little bit. <laughs> so I'm just gonna lower that neck a bit, and I've got some fabric left over from this um, dress, so I'm just gonna redo the neckband whenever I get around to that, but that's my plan for this dress. So I do really like this dress. I think it's not necessarily a dress that I would make time and again. Um, it's not kind of a style that I would necessarily wear that much, but I think it would be really good for a holiday. Um, if you're going to the beach or something, it would be a really good kind of t-shirt dress to pop on after you've been to the beach or been swimming or whatever. So yeah, it's a really, really nice pattern and I'd like to make another one, but make it a bit longer. So I think again with this, I did want to make it that little bit longer, uh, but by the time I'd hemmed it and everything, it's fine as it is, but it's not that long. I'd really like to make 
a kind of midi dress again, um, but maybe have a couple of slits at the side just so that it, you could walk in it. <laughs> uh, but I think that would be really nice. So yeah, maybe next summer I'll try another version of this, but I really want to get on and just redo this uh, neckband so that I do actually get some wear out of that. That's my Tabitha dress. So last two things, I have two things that I made for my daughter. So um, this fabric, I've shared this before in a previous fabric haul video, I think, it was kindly given to me by Ruin Tid with no obligation to share, just to try out and make something with. So I actually had this for quite a long while before I got around to making something with it because I just didn't really know what to make because my daughter at the moment is a bit of a funny stage where she doesn't really want to wear dresses quite as much as she maybe once did. So we thought for a while what she might like me to make for her with it. Um, and one day we were just out shopping and um, we came across a really nice dress on the high street that she really liked. And it was this dress basically. Um, and I thought, I really don't want to buy it because I'm sure I could make it. <laughs> you know, one of those things where you just feel as though you should be able to make everything. But I really wanted to give it a go. And um, so this is how this little dress turned out. It's basically two rectangles um, and I've just, I'm, measured her and I measured where I wanted everything to fall and everything. I made a top rectangle and then I made a little elastic channel where I could thread some elastic through to kind of bring it in under her shoulders. And I just made that higher than it needed to be uh, so that you got this kind of excess frill at the top there. And then I just simply attached two rectangles of fabric um, to make little ties. And then you might not be able to see because this fabric's so busy, but here, is a seam line um, and then I've added another rectangle to the bottom just to kind of add a skirt frill to it. So I'll pop a picture in of her wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. Um, this was a bit of an experiment really and I think if I made it again I would actually make the bottom frill a little bit more gathered, I'd make it kind of fuller. Um, I think because this was cotton and I was a bit worried it would be too structured, I made the uh, width of the bottom tier a little bit um, less than I maybe would have done if it was viscose or something because I was a bit worried it would be really puffy <laughs> and she wouldn't want to wear it. So um, I think, yeah, next time I'd definitely just give this bottom tier a bit more gather. But yeah, I'm really pleased with how that turned out actually, it's such a simple thing to make. Um, if it's something you're interested in and you'd like me to write this up as a blog with my measurements and everything in, then I can definitely do that. I can't remember what the measurements were off the top of my head, but I did actually for once write my measurements down for this in case I made it again. So yeah, if you are interested in how I made this and the measurements and everything, then let me know and I'll try and write it up as a blog. But yeah, really pleased with this. This fabric is lovely. All of their fabrics are organic, so they feel really nice and really soft. You know how sometimes 100% cotton can be quite crisp and quite uncomfortable. This is really lovely and soft and I love this woodland print and um, I've mentioned before how much Lily loves animals and things. But yeah, it's really kind of the perfect fabric for her. She really loved it. But because the weather was so bad, again, she didn't really wear this that much over the summer. So I'm really hoping it will still fit her next year. I guess the beauty of this kind of thing is that I could probably just loosen the elastic a bit if it was too small next year or add another tier or something. Um, but yeah, that's that one. Um, a really cute little dress for my daughter. So next is a knitting uh, project that I did over the summer, a bit of an unexpected knitting project actually, but a really, really cute one. I made this teddy and this is knitted. So years ago, or a few years ago now, I made um, the panda version of um, this pattern and I'll pop an image in here so you can see the panda. Um, I knitted this three or four years ago now and that panda has been my daughter's favourite toy and I'm so pleased. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's getting a bit kind of raggedy now and he's very floppy, uh, but she absolutely loved it. And one day in the summer holidays, we just popped into a hobby craft and she saw the panda pattern and she was like, oh, there's panda. And then she said, oh, one day you'll have to make me the teddy. <laughs> and then as we walked around, we saw this wall for the teddy. So she was like, oh, mommy, please, can you make me this teddy? I really want panda to have a brother. I want him to be the panda's brother. So um, we brought the wall and I had to go on with it immediately, obviously, because she wanted it straight away. And here he is. So this was a really kind of fun project. It's a really simple project. This wool is amazing. It really knits up like fur. It looks like fur. And I've shown the panda to people before and they can't really believe it's knitted because it's just such a clever wool. It looks like fur. Um, so it's knitted in stocking stitch and um, yeah, it just kind of is so fluffy that it looks really furry. 
Um, it's a really simple pattern to make. I think even if you're a beginner knitter, you'd manage it quite well as long as you can knit and purl and increase and decrease. That's basically all it is. And um, it's much more simple than it looks, I think. Um, I knitted this really quickly over a weekend and because the wool is chunky, and you do it on quite big needles, it really did knit up really quickly. And um, yeah, I think I'd done it in a weekend. So I actually had one of those kind of plastic teddy noses and I can't remember even why I had that, but I had it in my button box and I had proper kind of soft toy eyes as well. So I've added those to him. And I think they kind of finish it really nicely because I really hate sewing on toy faces. <laughs> I just feel like you can't get them right very easily. So it was a relief not to have to sew on a teddy face um, and use those instead. But yeah, really fun, quick and easy project. So if you're looking for something like this, I'd highly recommend this. Don't be put off like I was at first by how difficult it looks. I thought it was going to be really difficult and really fiddly to do, but actually it's a very simple pattern and it comes together really quickly. So I'll link all the details on the wool and everything that I use down below in case you are interested. Um, I also, I'm not the biggest fan of making soft toys actually, um, because I just find them quite fiddly. So with this, um, I don't enjoy the sewing up of soft toys really. So with this, I kind of stuffed it and sewed it up as I went along and that made the process a bit easier actually. Um, and I didn't have loads of pieces to stuff and sew up at the end of this. And she's really pleased with this. He sits with Panda on her bed and uh, yeah, just a really fun, quick summer project to do. So that interrupted my blue cardigan for a little while, which is still ongoing and I have been missing that and it's nearly finished. So hopefully I'll soon have that one to share with you too. So that's my last little project for the summer, this cute little knitted bear. And I think his name is just Teddy actually. I don't think he has a proper name yet. <laughs> so that brings me to the end of my makes video for July and August. Thank you so much if you've watched to the end. I realize it might be quite a long one. So I really hope you like what I've made. I'm really pleased with what I made actually. Um, there's a few things in there that I just feel as though went really well and obviously with my type of the dress that didn't go so well <laughs> um, but that's just how it goes isn't it sometimes you win some and you lose some and things don't always go according to plan and at least I know now what I need to do next time if I ever make the type of the again um, let me know in the comments below what you've been sewing let me know what you're up to let me know how your summer went I'd love to chat to you in the comments Thanks so much for watching everyone. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have enjoyed the video, I'd love you to give it a big like. It just helps my channel and it helps YouTube to kind of recognize you in a way and recommend you to more people. So it's really good if you can give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. And if you do watch and you haven't already subscribed, I'd love you to subscribe as well. Thank you so much again for watching. I feel like I've said that a million times. <laughs> Have a really lovely week, everyone. And I'll look forward to seeing you next week where I think I'll be sharing a kind of fabric haul plans type video. Um, so I'll look forward to seeing you then. Bye.